Mogadishu, known locally as Zamar, is the largest and capital city of Somalia. Located in the coastal Banaradir region on the Indian Ocean, the city has served as an important port for centuries. As of 2015, it has a population of 2,120,000 residents. Tradition and old records assert that southern Somalia, including the Mogadishu area, was historically inhabited by hunter-gatherers. These were later joined by Cushitic agro-pastoralists, who would go on to establish local aristocracies. During its medieval golden age, Mogadishu was ruled by the Muzaffar dynasty, a vassal of the Ajuran Sultanate. It subsequently fell under the control of an assortment of local sultanates and polities, most notably the Gelidi Sultanate. The city later became the capital of Italian Somaliland in the colonial period. After the Somali Republic became independent in 1960, Mogadishu became known and promoted as the White Pearl of the Indian Ocean. After the ousting of the Siad Bar regime in 1991 and the ensuing civil war, various militias fought for control of the city, later to be replaced by the Islamic Courts Union in the mid-2000s. The ICU thereafter splintered into more radical groups, notably Al-Shabaab, which fought the transitional federal government and its AMISOM allies. With a change in administration in late 2010, government troops and their military partners had succeeded in forcing out Al-Shabaab by August 2011. Mogadishu has subsequently experienced a period of intense reconstruction. As Somalia's capital city, many important national institutions are based in Mogadishu. It is the seat of the federal government of Somalia established in August 2012, with the Somalia Federal Parliament serving as the government's legislative branch. Yusuf Hussein Jimala has been the mayor of Mogadishu since October 2015. Villa Somalia is the official residential palace and principal workplace of the president of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed. In May 2012, the first Somali bank was established in the capital, which organized Mogadishu's first ever technology, entertainment, design conference. The establishment of a local construction yard has also galvanized the city's real estate sector. Abarukun Mosque is one of the oldest Islamic places of worship in the capital, built circa 667. The Mosque of Islamic Solidarity in Mogadishu is the largest masjid in the Horn region. Mogadishu Cathedral was built in 1928 by the colonial authorities in Italian Somaliland in a Norman Gothic style and served as the traditional seat of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Mogadishu. The National Museum of Somalia is based in Mogadishu and holds many culturally important artifacts. The National Library of Somalia is undergoing a $1 million Somali federal government-funded renovation, including a new library complex. Mogadishu is home to a number of scholastic and media institutions. As part of the municipality's urban renewal program, 100 schools across the capital are scheduled to be refurbished and reopened. The Somali National University was established in the 1950s, and professors from the university later founded the non-governmental Mogadishu University. Benadir University was established in 2002 with the intention of training doctors. Various national sporting bodies have their headquarters in Mogadishu, including the Somali Football Federation and the Somali Olympic Committee. Mogadishu Stadium was constructed in 1978 during the Siad Bar administration, with the assistance of Chinese engineers. It hosts football matches with teams from the Somalia League and the Somalia Cup. Additionally, the port of Mogadishu serves as a major national seaport and is the largest harbor in Somalia. Mogadishu International Airport, the capital's main airport, is the hub of the relaunched national carrier Somali Airlines. Etymology The name Mogadishu is held to be derived from the Persian Makadai Shah, which means the seat of the Shah. This is a reflection of the city's early Persian influence. It is known locally as Zamar. History Early history often regarded as being founded in the 10th century, the city is much older than that. 
Tradition and old records assert that southern Somalia, including the Mogadishu area, was inhabited in early historic times by hunter-gatherers of Khoisan descent. Although most of these early inhabitants are believed to have been either overwhelmed, driven away or, in some cases, assimilated by later migrants to the area, physical traces of their occupation survive in certain ethnic minority groups inhabiting modern-day Juba land and other parts of the south. The latter descendants include relic populations such as the Isle, Oria, the Waribi, and especially the Waboni. By the time of the arrival of peoples from the Kush Itak Rahanwain clan confederacy, who would go on to establish a local aristocracy, other Kush Itak groups affiliated with the Oromo and Ajuran had already formed settlements of their own in the subregion. The ancient city of Sarapian is believed to have been the predecessor state of Mogadishu. It is mentioned in the Periplus of the Erythrian Sea, a Greek travel document dating from the 1st century CE as one of a series of commercial ports on the Somali littoral. According to the Periplus, maritime trade already connected peoples in the Mogadishu area with other communities along the Indian Ocean coast. The Sultanate of Mogadishu later developed with the immigration of Amozidi Arabs, a community whose earliest presence dates back to the 9th or 10th century. This evolved into the Muzaffar dynasty, a joint Somali-Arab federation of rulers, and Mogadishu became closely linked with the powerful Somali Ajuran Sultanate. Following his visit to the city, the 12th-century Syrian historian Yaqit al-Hamawi wrote that it was inhabited by dark-skinned Berbers, the ancestors of the modern Somalis. For many years, Mogadishu stood as the preeminent city in the Bilad al Barbar, meaning land of the Berbers, which was the medieval Arabic term for the Horn of Africa. By the time of the Moroccan traveller Ibn Battuta's appearance on the Somali coast in 1331, the city was at the zenith of its prosperity. He described Mogadishu as an exceedingly large city with many rich merchants which was famous for the high-quality fabric that it exported to destinations including Egypt. Batutter added that the city was ruled by a Somali sultan, Abu Bakr ibn Saik Umar, who was originally from Berbera in northern Somalia and spoke both Somali and Arabic with equal fluency. The sultan also had a retinue of wazirs, legal experts, commanders, royal eunuchs, and other officials at his service. Additionally, there appears to have been a strong Persian presence in both Mogadishu and Zila for a time. A Shia influence can still be seen in some areas, as in the southern Somalia veneration of Fatima, the Prophet Muhammad's daughter. This fact is also reflected in the etymology of the city's name, which derives from the Persian Makad i Shah and means the seat of the Shah. The Portuguese would subsequently attempt to occupy the city, but never managed to take it. In his journal of an expedition to the region in 1497-1499, the explorer João de Sá, who accompanied Vasco da Gama on the voyage, wrote that Mogadoxo was controlled by Moors, a big town surrounded by four towers. It had houses several stories high and large palaces in its center. This R and his men bombarded the city before continuing southwards along the seaboard. The Hawi Somali, however, were later successful in defeating the Ajuran state and bringing about the end of Muzaffar rule. 1800s 1900s by 1892, Mogadishu was under the joint control of the Somali Sultanate of the Jelidi and the Omani Sultanate of Zanzibar. The Jelidi sultans were at the height of their power. They dominated the southern ivory trade, and also held sway over the Juba and Shabel valleys in the hinterland. The Omani Sultan's authority in Mogadishu, however, was largely nominal. When Imam Azan bin Qais of Oman sought to build a fort in the city, he was thus obligated to request permission from Sultan Ahmed Yusuf of Jelidi. This fort of Garessa was eventually constructed in 1870. The Sultan of Zanzibar later leased and then sold the infrastructure that he had built to the Italians, but not the land itself. 
which was Somali-owned. Italian Somaliland's capital in 1905, Italy made Mogadishu the capital of the newly established Italian Somaliland. The Italians subsequently referred to the city as Mogadishu. After World War I, the surrounding territory came under Italian control with some resistance. Thousands of Italians settled in Mogadishu and founded small manufacturing companies. They also developed some agricultural areas in the south near the capital, such as Janal and the Villaggio Duca degli Abruzzi. In the 1930s, new buildings and avenues were built. A 114 km narrow gauge railway was laid from Mogadishu to Jaffa. An asphalted road, the Strada Imperial, was also constructed and intended to link Mogadishu to Addis Ababa. In 1940, the Italo Somali population numbered 22,000, accounting for over 44% of the city's population of 50,000 residents. Mogadishu remained the capital of Italian Somaliland throughout the latter polity's existence. After World War II Mogadishu was made the capital of the Trust Territory of Somalia, an Italian-administered fiduciary political entity under the ONU mandate, for 10 years. 1960-1990 British Somaliland became independent on 26 June 1960 as the state of Somaliland, and the Trust Territory of Somalia followed suit five days later. On 1 July 1960, the two territories united to form the Somali Republic, with Mogadishu serving as the nation's capital. A government was formed by Abdullah Issa and other members of the trusteeship and protectorate government. With Haji Bashir Ismail Yusuf as president of the Somali National Assembly, Aden Abdullah Osman Dar as president of the Somali Republic, and Abdrashid Ali Shimaka as prime minister, on 20 July 1961 and through a popular referendum, the people of Somalia ratified a new constitution, which was first drafted in 1960. In 1967, Mohammed Haji Ibrahim Eagle became Prime Minister, a position to which he was appointed by Shimaka, on 15 October 1969, while paying a visit to the northern town of Lasanad. Somalia's then-president Abdurashid Ali Shimaka was assassinated by one of his own bodyguards. His assassination was quickly followed by a military coup d'état on 21 October 1969, in which the Somali army seized power without encountering armed opposition, essentially a bloodless takeover. The putsch was spearheaded by Major General Mohamed Siad Bar, who at the time commanded the army. Alongside Bar, the Supreme Revolutionary Council that assumed power after President Shah Mark's assassination was led by Lieutenant Colonel Salad Gabi Rakedia, and Chief of Police Jama Korshel. Kedia officially held the title of Father of the Revolution, and Bar shortly afterwards became the head of the SRC. The SRC subsequently renamed the country the Somali Democratic Republic, arrested members of the former civilian government banned political parties, dissolved the parliament and the Supreme Court, and suspended the constitution. The Revolutionary Army established various large-scale public works programs, including the Mogadishu Stadium. In addition to a nationalization program of industry and land, the Mogadishu-based new regime's foreign policy placed an emphasis on Somalia's traditional and religious links with the Arab world, eventually joining the Arab League in 1974. After fallout from the unsuccessful Ogaden campaign of the late 1970s, the Bar administration began arresting government and military officials under suspicion of participation in the abortive 1978 coup d'état. -T Most of the people who had allegedly helped plot the putsch were summarily executed. However, several officials managed to escape abroad and started to form the first of various dissident groups dedicated to ousting Barra's regime by force. Civil war by the late 1980s, Barra's regime had become increasingly unpopular. The authorities became ever more totalitarian, and resistance movements, encouraged by Ethiopia's communist Erg administration, sprang up across the country. 
This eventually led in 1991 to the outbreak of the civil war, the toppling of Barra's government, and the disbandment of the Somali National Army. Many of the opposition groups subsequently began competing for influence in the power vacuum that followed the ouster of Barra's regime. Armed factions led by United Somali Congress commanders General Mohamed Farah Aided and Ali Mahdi Mohamed, in particular clashed as each sought to exert authority over the capital. UN Security Council Resolution 733 and UN Security Council Resolution 746 led to the creation of UNOSOMI, the first stabilization mission in Somalia after the dissolution of the central government. United Nations Security Council Resolution 794 was unanimously passed on 3 December 1992, which approved a coalition of United Nations peacekeepers led by the United States. Forming the Unified Task Force, the alliance was tasked with assuring security until humanitarian efforts were transferred to the UN. Landing in 1993, the UN Peacekeeping Coalition started the two-year United Nations operation in Somalia too, primarily in the south. Some of the militias that were then competing for power interpreted the UN troops' presence as a threat to their hegemony. Consequently, several gun battles took place in Mogadishu between local gunmen and peacekeepers. Among these was the Battle of Mogadishu of 1993, an unsuccessful attempt by U.S. troops to apprehend faction leader aided. The U.N. soldiers eventually withdrew altogether from the country on 3 March 1995, having incurred more significant casualties. In 2006, the Islamic Courts Union, an Islamist organization, assumed control of much of the southern part of the country and promptly imposed Sharia law. The new transitional federal government, established two years earlier, sought to re-establish its authority. With the assistance of Ethiopian troops, AMISOM peacekeepers and air support by the United States, it managed to drive out the rival ICU and solidify its rule. On 8 January 2007, as the Battle of Ras Kambani raged, TFG President and founder Abdullahi Yusuf Ahmed, a former colonel in the Somali army, entered Mogadishu for the first time since being elected to office. The government then relocated to Villa Somalia in Mogadishu from its interim location in Badoa, marking the first time since the fall of the Ba'a regime in 1991 that the federal government controlled most of the country. Following this defeat, the Islamic Courts Union splintered into several different factions. Some of the more radical elements, including al-Shabaab, regrouped to continue their insurgency against the TFG and oppose the Ethiopian military's presence in Somalia. Throughout 2007 and 2008, al-Shabaab scored military victories, seizing control of key towns and ports in both central and southern Somalia. At the end of 2008, the group had captured Badawa but not Mogadishu. By January 2009, al-Shabaab and other militias had managed to force the Ethiopian troops to retreat, leaving behind an under-equipped African Union peacekeeping force to assist the transmissional federal government's troops. Between 31 May and 9 June 2008, representatives of Somalia's federal government and the Moderate Alliance for the Reliberation of Somalia group of Islamist rebels participated in peace talks in Djibouti brokered by the UN. The conference ended with a signed agreement calling for the withdrawal of Ethiopian troops in exchange for the cessation of armed confrontation. Parliament was subsequently expanded to 550 seats to accommodate ARS members, which then elected a new president. With the help of a small team of African Union troops, the coalition government also began a counter-offensive in February 2009 to retake control of the southern half of the country. 
to solidify its control of southern Somalia. The TFG formed an alliance with the Islamic Courts Union, other members of the Alliance for the Reliberation of Somalia, and Alusana Waljamaa, a moderate Sufi militia. In November 2010, a new technocratic government was elected to office, which enacted numerous reforms, especially in the security sector. By August 2011, the new administration and its AMISOM allies had managed to capture all of Mogadishu from the Al-Shabaab militants. Mogadishu has subsequently experienced a period of intense reconstruction spearheaded by the Somali diaspora, the municipal authorities, and Turkey, a historic ally of Somalia. Geography Mogadishu is situated on the Indian Ocean coast of the Horn of Africa, in the Banaradir administrative region in southeastern Somalia. The region itself is coextensive with the city and is much smaller than the historical province of Benadir. The city is administratively divided into the districts of Abdiaziz, Bondhia, Danile, Darkenli, Hama Jarjab, Hama Wayne, Heloa, Hodan, Howl Wadag, Karin, Shangani, Shibus, Waburi, Wadajir, Wartigli, and Yakshid. Features of the city include the Hamar Wine Old Town, the Bakara Market, and Gazira Beach. The sandy beaches of Mogadishu have vibrant coral reefs and are prime real estate for the first tourist resorts in many years. The Shabel River rises in central Ethiopia and comes within 30 kilometers of the Indian Ocean near Mogadishu before turning southwestward. Usually dry during February and March, the river provides water essential for the cultivation of sugarcane, cotton, and bananas. Climate for a city situated so near the equator, Mogadishu has a relatively dry climate. It is classified as hot and semi-arid, as with much of southeastern Somalia. By contrast, towns in northern Somalia generally have a hot arid climate. Mogadishu is located in or near the tropical thorn woodland biome of the Holdridge Global Bioclimatic Scheme. The mean temperature in the city year-round is 27 degrees Celsius, with an average maximum of 30 degrees Celsius and an average minimum of 24 degrees Celsius. Mean temperature readings per month vary by 3 degrees Celsius, corresponding with a hyperoceanic and subtype truly hyperoceanic continentality type. Precipitation per year averages 429.2 mm. There are 47 wet days annually, which are associated with a 12% daily probability of rainfall. The city has an average of 3,066 hours of sunshine per year, with 8.4 hours of sunlight per day. Mean daylight hours and minutes per day are 8 h24. The annual percentage of sunny versus cloudy daylight hours is 70 and 30, respectively. Average sun altitude at solar noon on the 21st day of the month is 75.